Welcome back to the ASUS ROG Summer 2015 Summer Hearthstone Tournament. I am Liquid Monk. Joined with me as always is Liquid Savits and new to the table here is Phone Tap. Now we had a pretty, I want to say interesting series between Powder and Life Coach last time uh, in the last series, but right now in our second round of eight match, we are going to bring you Hoj or Hoy versus Martin Creek. Phone Tap, how are you doing today and how do you think about this first match? I'm doing great. Um, I'm a Excited to see how this uh, match will turn out. Uh, Martin Crete was in my group yesterday, and um, he was able to beat me 3-0. Uh, and um, I, would like to, I would like to think that he has a good chance of uh, going well, but Hoj is a very good player, so I expect this to be a very close match. Yeah, you always want the, the guy who beats you to advance to the finals and eventually win the whole thing. So at least you can say, hey, I lost to the winner of the tournament, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much. Well, um, phone tap, I want to ask you a little bit, because I actually haven't seen Martin Creek play all, all weekend. So what was he playing? What was his strategy? And what do you think of him? Uh, so yesterday he brought Warrior. I didn't get to see the Warrior because I banned it. Um, he brought Agro Paladin, uh, a face hunter with Argent Squires. I think it was a face hunter with Argent Squires. And um, a third, and a, a combo druid. So okay. yeah, he managed to thrill, thrill me with that lineup. So it seemed to do well for him. Yeah. Pretty interesting. I'm not seeing that Warlock. Warlock has been popping everywhere. We saw that Life Coach took it out for today, but almost all the players have, have been bringing it. So he might mix things up and bring it today, but I wouldn't mind seeing that kind of aggressive lineup again yeah. as well. I think it's, it's cool to see that uh, there's different strategies that work. Well, instead of speculating, speculating on the lineup, let's just take a look at the lineups right now. Yeah. Okay, so seeing that Paladin from Martin Creek, I, I believe it's going to be the Acro Paladin again. Yeah, meanwhile, Hoi, he's going to bring the decks that he always brings to every single tournament. Hunter, Druid, Zoo probably, and the Patron Warrior. His patron warrior gets banned, of course, and he's going to be uh, remain with a very comfortable lineup. Hoi, he of course, he brings it to every tournament, but I don't think this is a lineup that can get like really hard countered easily by an opposing lineup, unlike Life Coach's lineup, which includes, for example, Handlock. Yeah, Hoi is sticking to his guns here. I, I, I don't expect that he would, he would change the Warlock into Handlock suddenly. Uh, he's, al he's also going with the same ban as, as he has been in the past. Uh, banning that Hunter instead of the Warrior. We have seen a lot of Warrior bans. Warrior has been the most banned class, but uh, Hoi has been banning the Hunter. It has been working out for him. And uh, and yeah, I, I don't think there's any, any major weaknesses in that lineup. And th that's the way that he, he wills as feels as well. He feels confident in playing it again. Yeah. Meanwhile, on the other hand, um, there's Agro Paladin, Druid Hunter. Don't really feel like there's any weak decks there. They're pretty much regarded as some of the stronger decks, pretty much with Agro Paladin being the new addition to the top tier list. Yeah, it's one of those decks that has been getting really popular lately. Um, I still have a little bit of a hard time evaluating it. H how good it is in competitive play, but the more I see it, the more I've seen people having success with it. It has been good for, for those who have been playing it. Yeah. Well, it's nice to note that this is actually Martin Creek's first time on the stream. And I believe one of Martin Creek's first times in, uh, on the stage. Of course, he is from SK Gaming, a Swedish player on SK Gaming. And I believe he was originally from Team Darkstar, the team that Orange came from. So definitely a team that, uh, the original team was at least a team that bred a lot of good players who can uh, break out into the scene. All right, here we got the first game. It looks like he brought Agro Pally once again. Yeah, the Squire pretty sweet for turn one against the Hunter. There's a lot of two ones in the Hunter deck, so the Squire should be excellent against those. Doesn't deal that perfectly with something like going to Scientist, but uh, well, we'll see if he picks up a buff. We saw that he uh, runs uh, a Consecration. Um, I noticed some uh, Agro Palace may or may not run uh, Consecration. I personally don't, I'm not a big fan of the card. I understand it, it could be good against Aggressive Ground, but I always felt it wasn't really an Aggressive Ground. It, it didn't feel good whenever I played it. So I, when I had it, when I brought Agro Palace my, my first day, I didn't have the Consecrations. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, this is pretty interesting. Uh, another addition, like Haunter Creeper in Agro Paladin. I, it seems like everyone in the tournament who is bringing Agro Paladin is also putting Haunter Creeper in their decks. But it, it wasn't seen at all, pretty much in last in the last week, like or at least one week ago in competitive play. But it seems to be working out pretty well, especially against Hunter. Yeah, it's it's like a recent innovation that has been. Because the Death Rattle one ones, the, it's quite often that you have a, a minion for turn four with those Blessing of Kings. So I think that's like the biggest upside of playing that. Yeah, I think before Hunter Creeper players were bringing besides the Shredders or rather the um, Shielded Mini Bots and, and the Night Jugglers. Yeah. 
So this makes a lot of sense. I think just generally overall, the Hunter Creeper is seen as a better card than the Inuitron. Yeah. So I think players were thinking, why are we bringing this Inuitron anyway? There's not really any Divine Shield synergy in the deck. Wow. Excellent oh, that's, a, up here. that's a good draw. That Squire is also like, it's, it's doing a lot of work here. The only thing with the Master for Battle is that he, he might be thinking about Unleash the Beasts and uh, Unleash the Hounds and that, that would, uh, that would kind of counter it, but in case it's not even there, I, I don't think you can pass up on this. I actually don't think Unleash the Hounds would be that amazing here because it takes the poise entire turn. And it only breaks even. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's not that amazing. I mean, it, it would still be alright, but I guess Explosive Trap might be even better. Well, no. Or kind of the same. Yeah, not only that, but if your opponent uses Unleash the Hounds here, he's less likely to have a second Unleash the Hounds. That's true, so you can just, uh, after that, you can just commit all in. Okay. Uh, Time to summon some huffers. Yeah. Oh, well, that's uh, not a huffer. <laughs> that's gonna be dealt by the true silver. Unless he picks up a king's, then he might consider that too. Looks like an obvious play. Obvious true silver here. Can't blame him for taking his time though. It wouldn't be too bad to just use the weapon and maybe throw three one ones into that, but. Oh man, how do you pass up on this? Yeah. The other problem with throwing down the minions on the board instead is you're kind of really weak to unleash the hounds there. Yeah. In fact, the hunter could just unleash the hounds and go all face. Yeah, I mean, you had to kill it. Even if you don't play the true slow, I think you had to kill it. So it would have taken off some of the one ones, and then there would be a little bit less value in the unleash the, unleash the hounds in that sense. But it's looking really good for the paladin player right now. Okay, let's see what he drew. Ooh, that's a good card. Hmm. Kind of gets dealt with by uh, by an Iron Beak Owl, but still, Blessing of Kings. You get instantly 4 damage to face, 4, four extra damage to face, and uh, it has to be dealt with. It's really good. Let's see, uh, heading to Hunter's turn 5, you have to consider the Knife Dragon Unleash and wonder if he uh, held that combo for this long. And if that's the case, he might consider like maybe uh, using the 1-1s and giving out the creep, but that doesn't... Um, he wastes so much damage then, yeah. though. Yeah, so... We, we, by clearing the spider, I think he has to use the true silver, so that's six damage not going to face. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's a little funny that I think, as the aggro paladin, you're kind of even the aggressor in this matchup. You generally even clear out lower than your opponent, um, and you have, a l you have a lot of spells that which do a lot of direct damage to your opponent's face. So face we go. He's and probably going to keep the true silver for now because he doesn't have another weapon in, in his hand yet. Or he could just go face. I mean, there's a lot of things he can do. Uh, taking out the beast, I, I guess. So um, also playing even more around knife juggler unleash. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Oh, let's unleash. So he could clear the board with uh, iron beak owl unleash. Ah, oh, that seems pretty good. It's gonna still leave him up with two one ones and a, and a two one. That seems like a really good yeah. turn. Yeah, it's a really good swing turn right now. Yeah, I think uh, Hoi is now back in this game. Not only is Probably. he back in this game, I think he's in the lead yeah, right now. Yeah, he seems to be ahead. That was a huge draw. Martin Creek seems to be running out of steam, and not only that, the, the Divine Favor won't get any value off. Not sure what didn't hit the mark. What do you think of that emote from Hoi? What, what was he trying to say with that? What was the point of that? I, I honestly wouldn't put it past him to just emote to confuse his opponent. Could be. I, it, I'm seems, it seems like a very Hoi move. At least it, it, it successfully confused the caster. <laughs> which is something. <laughs> Lotep, Sergeant, go. Miko, face. <laughs> I think you can trade a bit here. Why? <laughs> He's winning <laughs> the race right now. <laughs> He's winning the way, race, and uh, with, with that low tip effect, there's no no good way to even clear the five five. Yeah, I, I think he has to consider like playing Lotus. That way, he can uh, consecrate and have a uh, make him like regain the board. Yep, everything will face. What can he do? What can Martin Greek do here? 
Well, he can play his Squire and Wolf Rider, but that's not so good. I can I think he, at this point he's forced to make some trades. Yeah. But it's still gonna leave him in bad shape. Okay. The Wolf Rider is an interesting choice. We've seen yeah. a lot of players cut this card in Agro Paladin. Oh yeah. And I overheard Powder saying uh, yesterday, "Why would you put Wolf Fighter in your Agro Paladin deck? That's so terrible." So yeah, different, um, a lot of different like different opinions, to. exactly. It could be like uh, he, he got the arcane golems for it. He may be thinking, uh, okay, it's one less damage, but I can potentially play it on turn three. Because arcane golem is not a card you want to play on turn three. Because of the giving out the mana crystal. So, so I, since there's Wolf Rider, I think there's no arcane golems. He could be running both, but it seems a little bit too much. Yeah, there's just so many different types of chargers you can put in your aggro paladin deck, and it seems like Lich have been more refined lately. But you know, you yeah. have the South Sea deck hand, you have Arcane Golem, Small Fires, even Leroy is a certain possibility. It's true. So now it's now it's Martin Creek with a stronger board, but their life totals are. Oh, oh wow, that's pretty good here. It's gonna give him some extra damage. And oh. a <laughs> Leoth would have been slightly better, I think, but still, how much can he? With the hero power, he can deal, uh, he can deal a total of eight. So that sets up the lethal for the wolf rider on the following turn. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Well, that's pretty good. Not only that, there tend to be very few taunts in the aggro paladin deck. If your opponent is running haunted creepers, they probably won't run the neutron, which is generally a one of anyway if oh, they yeah. do run it. Also, defender of Argus is also a possibility, but probably not a uh, very likely it's, one. It's it's pretty unlikely. It um. You absolutely hit up over here. I mean, there's no way you, you miss out on setting up the, the lead one. What, what, what Martin Creek right now, right now needs is, uh, is the last true silver, I believe. He can still, he can, he's gonna play the, the Might and just Divine Favor for one card. But if, if he picks up anything else but the true silver, I think this is over. He could, he could, if he plays a defender, it will also work. But I don't think it's in there. I don't think the defender is in there. Hmm. Well, uh, why why would you trade before playing the divine favor? I mean, it's most likely that he's still gonna do this, but uh, is he not gonna divine favor? It's not exactly getting better. Yeah, it, and you don't exactly have the most time in the world. Yeah, let's see if he gets in this true silver. Nope. Gonna mm. do it. <laughs> That's gonna be game one going to going to play. Yeah, actually, from Martin Creek's perspective, he thinks that there might be a chance for him to win. That's true. There's only one card in play, so, but uh, that one is a good one. Yeah. Really back and forth game there. There are just was. a lot of swing turns. It really was. But it does feel like that Unleash the Hounds top deck from Hoi, even though it wasn't like the most amazing Unleash the Hounds, it killed mm -hmm. off a bunch of 1-1s. One it, it was really good. Yeah, it, it allowed him to turn the board into his favor. It was, it was so clean. He managed to clear everything, and he still had a few minions out there. So from that mo point on, it was a, he, ha he had the advantage for sure. Up to that point, it, it was uh, the game was going kind of in Martin Creek's favor. Yeah. Now, um, I believe uh, Hoi, he still has his Zulek. And he still has his Druid left. Both of which I feel like can do pretty well against the Agro Paladin from Martin Creek. I've talked to uh, Chaki about the matchup between Zoo and Agro Paladin. And he surprised me in that, in that he actually said that the Agro Paladin is favored in that matchup. Even though you wouldn't expect so because Define Favor is typically a dead card. Basically his rationale was that you have uh, all the mid-range Paladin cards which are good against Zoo. And you have a lot of other low curving cards which are also good against Zoo. All right, so it looks like we're gonna have to see the Paladin versus Warlock. Yep. The Paladin again. Let's see if it works, works out better this time. Yeah, I'm very interested in this matchup. Let's we'll see if Hoi somehow mixed things up, but I, I think he's gonna stick with the Zoo. That's yeah, looks like it. Those seem to be very Zooey cards to me. He seems he seems to be considering keeping the in-gang boss, and it's it's a very good card on turn three, but you gotta I think you gotta put some importance on. Hitting your early game curve, yeah, against, no, especially against Agro Paladin. It's yeah. interesting because uh, normally you, you would never keep this, but he, he seems to value it kind of high, and I can understand why. It, it spawns the aims, the aims trade really well against yeah. those. It's a bit optimistic because there's a chance that he wouldn't find a one drop or a two drop or a one or a two drop, and uh, in that case he would just fall too far behind. Yeah. Does get the flame imp here? The imp gang boss, or rather the uh, flame imp, actually 
it might be bad against certain cards from the Paladin, but it, generally I don't think it's that bad because you see Argent Squire in his deck, mm -hmm. and there probably might not be like, oh, there is a Leopardum though. Oh, Too that's bad. pretty sweet, huh? Yeah. For Mouth and Kree. This is one of those matchup push, matchups where you actually prefer the Void Walker instead of the Flame in one turn one. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, it really needs to pick up a two drop here. Doesn't really matter which two drop it is, but if he doesn't find any two drop, I think yeah. he's gonna have a bad time. Yeah, if you're sitting in the audience today, uh, you might notice some uh, noise in the background. It's a pretty cool event we're having in the background, actually, some robot wars. But uh, we apologize, of course, but you know, Hearthstone is still Hearthstone, even with some background noise. Yeah. Well, that's not that's not probably the worst two drop that he could have drawn, but it's still a two drop, so it deals with uh, with another minion. It's rage one for one, and you don't want to be tapping too much against the divine favor deck. And here we have a pretty interesting scenario. Martin Creek is going to set up the knife juggler, but yeah. how good is that against the imp gang boss? But like, just, he still had to play it though. If, the, if there was anything else coming out but the imp gang boss, it would have yeah. been. Uh, would have been even better. Oh, like if, if anything but the imp gang boss yeah. came down on this turn, I think the game would be over here from knife juggler. Yeah, right? probably. Right, right. Knife juggler so unleash deal. in a way. Yeah. But now it's it creates a weird situation. Yes. Yeah. This is what this is why Hoi kept the card. He knew that it would it would set up a, a good situation for him. So it seems to be paying off. I think it's the right to muster for battle. Um, the alternate play is like on a creeper, a beast sergeant, and I think uh, muster battle does a little better developing the board. Yeah. Not only that, but you get the light justice, which you can use to mm. clear off the one ones from the AP boss eventually. Hoi really seems to know what he's doing in this matchup by keeping keeping the combos. Obviously, the card is good against the, against the, this paladin. But considering that he didn't have a turn one or a turn two, it was a bit of a gamble, but it's paying off big time. That huh. imp gamble was just amazing. Well, that's a good draw. Yep. <laughs> that's a perfect draw. So basically, Martin Creek needs the silence. Like, yeah, very he has soon. to find an iron pick. I, I don't know how else he's gonna deal with the Mulganis. Without the iron pick, I will. Oh man. Oh, that's a nice draw too. Yeah. Now, um, um, he got the defender. Can, uh, yeah, force what? him to uh, kill the boy caller and then bring out the Mulganis. Yep. Yeah, even going for a phase here. Again, I mean, why not? It's owl or no nothing. Oh. Owl or bust. Yeah. Well, this is rough. What do you do here? I think you have to play at this point, assuming that there is no big what? minion on your opponent's in your opponent's hand. So you just kill off the void caller. Yeah. Well, you have to get through taunt anyway. <laughs> like you're an aggro deck, so yeah. going faces. Yeah, he better kill the Void Walker first. Though he, he can kill both of those taunts here. Right, but right. But if he yeah. does it in the wrong order and goes for the Void Caller first, <laughs> yeah. the the Void Void Walker is going to get buffed. That would be think. unfortunate. Uh, okay. Yeah, the problem with the Wolf Rider is that. You can't actually kill off both demons here. For justice. Yeah. I'm gonna keep leaving that up. I guess he's hoping to draw the owl. Yeah, it's the wolf rider is the pa paladin dark bomb. Paladin <laughs> dark. <Duh. laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. Not too bad. Yeah. So, I think it's uh, dark wolf abusive. Just keep pushing up more. Yeah. Damage. Just go face. The the Paladin is going to go quite low here. With those buffs, he can, he can get four extra damage. I'm, I mean, he's not going to overwhelm overwhelms just yet, so... It's going to be a total of... Ten damage going to face this stuff. Oh my goodness, so much damage. Yeah, now it's all or nothing. You have to kill that Void yeah. Oh! Oh, what a draw. 
That is huge. Oh. Well, no, no, you, you that. that is going no, no, to be huge. You play that card. Yes, that, that's a good one. Come on, Martin. You can do it. Does it save him, though? I mean, there's still a lot of stats on the board. That has four, four, four toughness on the void, void walker. I don't think he can get a full clear, can he? Not quite. Yeah. After killing off that void, void walker, he's yeah. gonna have five he can, damage. Total. He can leave everything, he can kill off everything but the uh, defender. Or, or defender. Yeah. I, I actually think that he's gonna leave off the defender, then he can go face a little bit too. The defender is probably the one that's gonna stay up. And I would probably uh, use my Haunted Creeper to clear off the Abusive as well, just to get more power on the board. Yeah, I mean, there's no Hellfires in that list. The, battle. the game would have been over if you didn't pick up that Owl, owl right there. Hoi is still in, in, on the driver's seat. But. Yeah, but you know, if Hoi yeah. draws dead, go, dead over the next two turns, there's still a possibility. Yeah. The That's Parting a... Creek somehow managed to get a full clear. Oh, oh. is that it? Uh, Not no. quite. Yeah. It's missing one mana. Yeah. But it, what that means is if anything sticks on the board. I want to see the power rolling here. Just in case, like, there's a Consecration. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's a good, good point. point, yeah. Yeah, there's the Consecration. Yeah, so how do you... Uh, uh, you, know, you have to win if, <laughs> if we just went for it there. Because that would have played around. Now, now there's a chance that the, the, the power rolling is going to get discarded. So, yeah, yeah. you master for sure. Yeah, put as much power on the board as possible. Mm -hmm. And now, how much power is there? Five, six, seven. There's eight power on the board, so any five damage. I don't believe there are any cards in the Paladin deck that do five damage, is the issue. He needs a Define Favor into something. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Why didn't he power all man on the last then? That was a possibility that he wouldn't have anything on the board. I'm, I'm not sure, I because there's I no taunts. There's no, that's really heals too, so you could have pushed him down to 3 HP, so even with the true silver, the Doom card would have been lethal. Yeah, maybe I feel like that was a huge mistake from, from Ho Hoi, which might even lose to him the game now. Hoi probably wasn't thinking of Consecration, basically. He's I guess. not considering like that the Paladin might be able to clear off a 4 implosion board. Yeah, has to be the case. Let's see. So, 1 in 3 to win the game here, I think you go for it. Oh! 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 Well, not punished this yeah. time. <laughs> now, I I even if that, um, uh, even if the power will make would have been discarded, the Paladin would have had to trade everything into it. But then again, like, how do you charge the last two damage as a warlock? Yeah, it would have been still anybody's game if if he didn't uh, get to keep that power overwhelming. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, like we said, there's pretty much very little way for. Uh, um, Martin Creek to deal five damage on the opponent's next turn, mm -hmm, an additional true. five damage. It would, it would have been difficult, but uh, also uh, it would have been difficult for uh, for Hoi to deal the remaining two after after the board control is in the Paladin. So. Yeah, so really back and forth game there. Yeah, sure was. Yeah, and again, it's like the the Paladin deck is kind of failing at the moment. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but there's Druid and Patron left, and against uh, Hoi's Druid, you know, you have to expect that that Druid will eventually draw a Wild Growth and eventually draw into an Innervate. Yep, but I mean we've seen it sometimes that even in five games in a row there's no wild crowd to be found or or an inner right? So anything can happen in in this third games. Oh. And you know what? It's going to be my favorite matchup of the game, Druid Mirror. We saw the wild crowd there, <laughs> a little <laughs> glimpse of it for, for Martin Creek. Yeah. Not only that, Martin Creek stuff. is running some kind of uh, ancient of war tech in his druid, a pretty uh, standard tech these days. I would say it's an a majority of druid decks, even. Mm -hmm. That could be very good in the mirror if he it eventually be, yeah. gets to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, Black Knight is completely extinct now, for example. It is. So, at least two Ancients of War in this deck. Yep. At least. Maybe even three. Ooh. I, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Some faceless manipulators in there. Okay, right. so it's kind of going to be the uh, classic matchup of Innervate Druid versus Wild Growth Druid. Yeah, I like the Wild Growth a little bit better. Yeah. I have seen a lot of games, though, where Innervate uh, plus the Pilot of Shredder just creates a board where the opponent doesn't have Wrath, even yeah. though he has Wild Growth, and he just the, the recurring damage from the Pilot of Shredder just kills off the opponent. It's going to be a little different with a Shade, though. Yeah. 
So yeah, it looks like uh, he's gonna stay here and then possibly innervate Lotha next turn for the... Yeah, that seems to be the plan. Another wild growth, though I think he's just straight here. There's nothing, nothing else to do. Hero powering phase here would be useless. And the wild growthing in the six mana for the next turn is not exactly helpful either. There's no way to use the, the extra one. If, <coughs> if you had a Sylvana, sorry, or an Emperor, then, then the wild, wild growth might be a consideration. You know, one wild growth is always amazing, but two wild growths. The, wild, the second wild growth ends up kind of being a dead card here. Yeah, and it really much. hurts Martin Creek in that it's hard for him to curve out really well. Can you go face? Yep. Three damage. Yeah, Wrath not available. He'd have to charge or drew to the claw into the shade to clear it off without expending his own shade. I don't yeah. think he's too sad about that. Most likely these shades are going to be trading and uh, the Lotus are also going to be matching up. I mean, there's like no way you play. There's no way you play on. anything else but a lot of here. Well, that's kind of a sad turn, but you know, at least with the innervate, yeah. you have the peace of mind to know that you will have an ancient of war next turn. Yep, not too bad. Just gonna hero power and go face here, force maybe force him to trade or. Yeah, seems so. He wants to. He, yeah. He's thinking that it's likely that Martin Krieg is going to trade anyway. Yeah. And it looks like he will. If he had something like swipe and then then he could also like he could just like swipe and wrath for one, well, or he could swipe and you use can, the phase. You can actually savage or and wrath for three here. Good. That's actually not oh, that bad. Yeah. I think. It's actually That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. Let's see if he's gonna go for that. It, it also allows him to. It allows him to push seven damage to phase. But, and not only that, he gets to keep the load up. It might be important to keep it for now. The Roar and the Wrath might be a, a bit tricky to use later on. Especially the Roar, since he might not pick up the boss anytime soon. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Using the face on, on, on the load up to deal 2 damage, dealing that extra 3 from the Roar. Yeah. In comparison, the, the Kazan Mystic seems to be... A much weaker play here. Yeah, it is, but uh, I guess he wants to. He thinks that he, he wants to save the roar. Okay. Maybe he only plays once in the phase of the war, so yeah, in that case, as well. he, he yeah. might want to value it highly. Mm -hmm. The other argument is, though, if you only play one set of the combo, it's mm -hmm. less likely for you to draw the force of nature along with it. Yeah, that's true. So you might just want to roar as just one uh, half of the combo. So if you play the 5 then here, what's going to go wrong? Black Nothing. Knight. Black Knight. Yeah. <laughs> no way there's a Black Knight in there. It's yeah. just, no, it's not happening. Like, even if his opponent uh, knew Hoy's decks, like, he wouldn't target the Druid. Uh, no. uh, uh, the other of, Ho of Hoy's decks are Patron Warrior, mm -hmm. Zoo, and Hunter, which pretty much don't really run any significant taunts. I, I would love to see the five then there. there was, there's nothing to do about it can happen. Even if there was a, was a Keeper of the Crow to silence it, the, the Gazan still needs to trade in, yeah. and that improves his position. I, I like it as well because he also had an Emperor in his hand, so yeah. that was a good six trap to follow up. Like, yeah, it would have followed up yeah. really nicely. I, he didn't really need the card show here. He could just as well get the card show a little bit later. But what, what's, what's in favor of the lore is that now there's more cards in his hand, so the Emperor will get more value. Because th he gets two more cards, so there's two more cards that are getting the discounts from the Emperor. Yeah. So it's not like a, it's strictly a mistake. It's just yeah, like a it, little bit It's different. a good point, but now because his opponent also played a war, he's in a fairly difficult situation. That's true. Like now, now he's that, in that a, lore in a will bad get spot. full value. Yeah. <laughs> now he's in a pretty bad spot. I think it's tempered or fast. I mean, another reason why you would want to lower is that you know, turn se you might be want to draw deeper, maybe get your BGAs because turn seven can also be a, a Doctor Boom turn. So. Oh, that's, that's a, good, a point. good point. Yeah, that's a good point as well. There's a lot, lot to consider there. How much is that? If you, if you just went with double roar, hero power, the 60 damage is from the roars, one from the hero, so it will be 13 plus 9, 22. But that would lead up, leave up the Emperor. It's a bit scary. I don't know, but it's like so much damage. That's why hero power would be lethal for next turn. So he would have to like clear those minions. Yeah. I think he could have just, just go for it. 
But I don't know, I guess it's still gonna be good later. Why do you rot that one over the over the Emperor? I, th I think in his mind it doesn't matter since... Uh, he, he plans to kill one of them yeah. off with the... Yeah, if he's gonna kill both anyway. He's already committed to... One one goes, yeah. But yeah, that's... Okay, yeah, that's a good point though, because because he drew the piloted shredder, now he might have reconsidered... Uh, he, he was going with swipe in the first place, but he might have reconsidered like not killing one of them off and going for base with yeah. his ancient lore. Dead. Really playing a board control game. I don't, I don't know if Martin Creek needs to needs to be that uh, like defensive there. With the double roar, it would have been so tempting to just go face at least a little bit. Maybe only clear the Emperor. Go face. Yeah. He, he seems to like kind of, in, a, in a sense he missed a lot of damage yeah. there. Yeah. Now the only issue is, I think Martin Creek will get outvalued by all these really amazing cards. He does have the. Uh, like both of these players have the double roar in hand right now, so no, we'll see. Now, even though it's been a fairly slow back and forth game, it might end at yeah. just a moment's notice. Uh, maybe he should have taken a little bit more aggressive stance there. The more I look at his hand, the more I feel like he, he needed to take a take an aggressive line last turn instead of just clearing the board. Because this hand, you don't play the long game with this. You need to end it quickly. You know that your opponent has a full hand and just got emperor discounts on all of them. He's in a rough spot now. There's uh, absolutely no good way to clear out this ancient. Can I, like roar and uh, play one roar and swipe that he can then then he can trade off the shredder. That would be six and four from the swipe. So that would allow him to push seven face damage while dealing with that. So I guess that's decent, but it's not great. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of maybe using both Savage Roar since you could potentially draw into a Force Nature or maybe like want to drew the claw down yeah. for the next turn. You don't double Roar, but one Roar is, is okay, because he can't cast the two of them anyway. So I think it's a Swipe Roar, straight off the Shredder. Are you going to save uh, the second Roar? I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I don't, not, I don't I'm not really sure. It, it does seem like that second Roar isn't that valuable in this position. No, it doesn't do anything at all. Like, I'd rather have a 5-5 five five on the board. In order to get value out of that, he needs to... Yeah, and he would still have a minion from the Shredder too, so... In order to get value out of those, he needs to draw the Force of Nature and an Emperor or Inner Raid. That's pretty far off. So currently, uh, Force of Nature Savage Roar from uh, Martin Creek would only do uh, 20 damage, so... It's not... Uh, Ho, Ho doesn't necessarily have to heal. He can just hero power and get out of range there. Yeah. What's Roth should do it? I mean, unless there's Milhouse Manus, though. Right, I think right. you want to Roth over the hero power. Yeah, so yeah, in this case, yeah, yeah Roth definitely. Seems, seems a little better. Yeah, way better. If, if his opponent was to get a 4 power minion, like, what's the, the pirate, like, all, what's the name of the card? The 4 1. The 4 1 or. One eye cheat. Yeah, one eye cheat or Sukubus or uh, or Milhouse Monastery and have a combo. Well, then that just <laughs> then he, I guess it was meant for him to win the game. I guess you start off with Wall Growth here. Uh, yeah, I would do that. See what you draw. Uh, but the real issue is unless unless Martin Creek draws something amazing off this Wall Growth, the game seems almost locked up with the Ancient of War. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't even know what would be that amazing. Okay, that's, well, that's okay. <laughs> that's really yeah. Amazing. Okay. But I think his best draw was Dr. Boom since Hoyt doesn't have a BGH yet, even though know, he's drawn so much. No, I think he would have been dead if he drew that. Yeah. Then uh, the, then yeah, the yeah, lower So that, that, that's actually, I think that's the best draw. That probably was it. But still, Hoy has a lot of options. His hand is almost full. Yeah. If he ever draws uh, Force Nature, he can actually do both Savage Roar, so. Yeah. Ancient of War Shade. I mean, that sets up a lot of damage. Yeah, you're not really afraid of this Emperor, only reducing three cards. No. Well, you don't have enough mana for Ancient of War Shade, but... Oh yeah, you're at nine Oh, mana. he only has nine, that's true. So do you maybe double swipe then, like swipe face and swipe the Emperor, play the Shade. Or just, just play that con. Martin Creek doesn't have a way, to, so this is gonna pay off big time for Hawaii, unless Martin Creek stop deck something amazing. Getting the Force of Nature would be exactly it. Oh, man. That's not it. It would have been exactly lethal with, with the Force of Nature there, with the double roars. Mm. 
So, <laughs> I guess you. Well, this could be awful no matter what he does. <laughs> he could hold the card to this. Like, they uh, threw that the cloth on top. Hope to top deck something amazing. He could hold the cards in hand, maybe uh, wait for the force of nature. Okay. <laughs> I it's a bit scary, by the way. Yeah. yeah, I do think you have to hold these cards. Like, if you expend all your cards to clear this mm. ancient of board now, there's, you basically, there's no way for you to come back. These are your comeback mechanics that you have in your hand. I suppose. Time waits for no one. It's going to turn off. It feels that it's so likely for Hoi to have the combo here. He can take it clear it off if he decides to use some Saboteur. No, 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 yeah. I, I, I don't think that's a good one. Just hoping the big yeah, just uh, soft. Yeah. So, how much is this? Swipe uh, double roar, use the face on that bear. Swipe face twice and say 8 damage from the swipes. 9 from the, from the Ancient of War, so that's 2 damage off. No, a little bit more, 3. To be three damage off from lethal here. The swipes yes. are, are likely to happen. Probably both of them. One on the one on the emperor, one on the face. Drop a straighter or shade. Seems pretty solid. Wait, I think it's yeah, uh, I agree, yeah. I think it's two damage off lethal, but not the same anyway. Okay. But basically with this play there's no way for you to lose. Yeah, just, that's true. Let's fit in the wild good. Well, good, please. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why hold on, dude? Oops. Hoi is shaking his head a little bit, like a tiny misplay there, but it's not that meaningful. Wait. Or was it? Oh. Oh. I, oh. Oops. <laughs> With the two mana, would it have had no, done? No, no, it wouldn't. It would still wouldn't be it, I think, because you would use your wild growth, and you still only have enough for force nature savage or Plus, you have to get through the druid. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so you, this was you fine. go with your face and one three and into the three of the claw. That's yeah, but this, this, game eight, yeah, this should be game. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's gonna be. It. Yeah, for sure. Not, no need to count. Like, knows that it's way more than. Enough. Yeah, Emperor just did so much work there, and I think that last game had to do with Martin Creek taking a more defensive line. Yeah, well, yeah. It seemed like a. It, it might have been a poor choice there, with with so many cards uh, in Hoi's hand, uh, only having those roars, having wild crowd swipe. I, why do you go for the trade? It might have been a big mistake, but potentially it'll cost him the game. In yeah. the, he should have just made the call. Okay, if we go for a long game, it's, it's really unlikely for me to win. He, he just got the Emperor discount. He has more cards than I do. My cards are spells. How can I? Like, I need to take the best of them, of these minions that I have right now. Yeah. So that might have looked a little bit different, but um, yeah. yeah. Hoi right, taking 3-0. Yeah, Hoi in his last interview that he gave us, he mentioned that he really liked board control decks. Decks that you, ha you have to decide whether you want to go for face, whether to take control, and it might just be that Martin Creek isn't as familiar with those decks. Now, Hoy, uh, I think he's uh, about to come up for the end winners interview. I'd like to thank you, Phone Tab, for joining us in the casting desk. Mm -hmm. Thank and you for having me. Hoy, congrats. Thank Easy, you. right? 3 0 victory. Mm -hmm. I don't know about if it was easy or not. It's like. Yeah, a little frustrated about the last mistake in the last game that I didn't count my turn out with the white girl and so on. But yeah, yeah that was pretty small to be honest. Like at that point, yeah, it, it was there not was a big no deal way at all. you could yeah. lose. No. Yeah, I mean, but I was really happy with this lineup because my Dru my Dex is really good against Druid mm. because like Sue and Honda is like almost 100% win rate against. But he got Ace of all. I didn't thought he had that because he didn't have that the other days. But um, I'm really confident when they bring Druids. So anti-druid lineup, even though it doesn't have like tempo mage or mech shaman, for no. instance. And I'm really confident in the druid mirror because Ace and a four in the druid mirror is really strong. Yeah, yeah as sure we could is. obviously tell, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you draw two of them, it's like they're impenetrable walls if they don't run black. Yeah, Knight. and he didn't have any silence. And I also thought he would play a bulletin in the two first game because to target my druid, so I picked my Honda and my Shu first, so I could get a higher chance to win. And I got really lucky in the Honda game yeah. by top taking the Ondisla hounds. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I'm really happy right now. Yeah, it, it feels like your experience in playing a lot of open tournaments and a lot of lands as well is really helping you out against like a maybe a less experienced player who, who's I think this is his first time on stage. Yeah, just yeah. So uh, I thought he would be a little nervous and may, maybe make some 
minor mistakes because it's really it's a lot of pressure if it's the first time because yeah. there's so many people watching and you really want to do well, right? Mm -hmm. So you play it maybe a little more safe because in the druid mirror he made all the trade and I could just go yeah. face all the time. Yeah, we yeah. were talking about it that um, you, you had a full hand and he had like those two minions. He had the, he had like Shredder and uh, Ancient of War. He had double roar in his hand. He could he could have put you down to yeah. uh, was it four or something with the swipe still in his hand. And yeah. Yeah, it's like I got the initiative uh, in that game, even though he got the wild group. Yeah, it, it was a bit strange. So he, he decided to try yeah. to play for the board control when you had a full hand. Yeah, I, I think he he maybe dropped the ball a little bit there. But, but I'm um, I'm yeah. gonna play Powder next, right? Yes, you do. How yeah. do you feel about that match? Against Powder, um, to be honest, I'm happy that Powder won against Life Course. Mm -hmm. I know Powder's a really good player, but like... Anti-handlock lineup. <laughs> yeah, so I think because my deck is really good against Powder's, because mm -hmm. he got some pretty control deck, and, and he got the Druid as well. So um, yeah, I'm confident right now, but everything can happen in Hearthstone. Well, well thanks, congrats. Thank and, you. Uh, con um, good luck in the next match, which will happen pretty soon. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. See ya. Well, guys, let's take a look at, uh, at the bracket right now. And we have... Of course, Powder won his first match 3-2 against Life Coach and Hoy, taking a very convincing 3-0 victory against Martin Creek. They'll play in the first semifinals, which will happen in about three or, four, three or a few hours. Uh, right next, right after this, we'll have Tice versus Vortex, and that's going to be an interesting one. Tice is going to be um, like the favorite, I would say, even though Vortex did win the last assembly. I, so. I, I don't know. Like, I, I think that it's going to be an excellent match. Tice, one of the most accomplished players in the, in the world, and Vortex, last year's champion, also a really strong showing here, here in this tournament. Well, I think he, uh, he only uh, lost to life coach in the in second group stage, but he was still able to, to climb through the, through the loser's bracket. And uh, yeah, again, like, I'm excited to see, to see, the, see the lineups change potentially, how much do they adjust to each other. The Nihilum guys practicing a lot together. They have been talking a lot of strategy. Does Thais bring maybe some, some interesting decks? Does he try to counter Vortex with some special strategy? Oh man, I can't wait. Well, the players are setting up right now, and we're going to take a short 10-minute break, but right after we'll be bringing you that exciting match. <laughs> 